Okay, welcome everyone to Doe the Modern Poets, and um, we've got a fantastic lineup for you tonight. Later on, we have Richard Scott, we have Anna Beecher, and PR Murray. Um, our first poet tonight is Rachel Joseph, who is uh, someone I've seen here at Poetry at Three, and I know performs quite widely elsewhere in London. And um, let me tell you a little bit about her. Her first book of poetry, Little Brown Girl Looks at Her Childhood. Growing up mixed race at the time of being black or white was a choice you were expected to make. And it's due for publication this summer by Morgan's Eye Press, so something to look forward to. Um, she's also got a poem in the 2016 Lumen Anthology, Uncompassed, which is launched in July. And um, there's another bit here which I want to tell you about. Oh, she writes short stories, flash fiction, and um, that's been published on the internet um, to rave reviews. And she's also a part of Whispering Dialogue, a spoken word group, which whose first event in April at Charlton House in Greenwich was a huge success. Um, so there you are, and we're very pleased to have Rachel here for the uh, first time at Dodo Modern Poets. Um, I hope more people turn up in the course of the evening, but I'm sure those of us who are here are going to have a blast anyway. Please welcome Rachel Joseph. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me, Patrick. Um, yes, Little Brown Girl is going to be published by Morgan's Eye, uh, hopefully by the end of the month. And um, it's basically about being mixed race in the 50s and 60s, and I grew up in the 80s. <laughs> the first poem I'm going to read is called The Mother Country, and it's about my father coming over from Antigua. The Mother Country called, and he came, carrying his dreams in his Sunday best. Nothing in his neatly packed suitcase to stop the wind from biting his bones. Nineteen years old and confident, stepping on the soil of opportunity, breathing in the icy air, the welcome, like the weather, cold. <laughs> he had dreams of making it big and returning home in style. Bedsit land, no home from home, but grateful for a roof, a bed and a paraffin stove. That first winter, wrapped in blankets, huddled round a heatless flame. No state benefits, need to get a job. Skilled, but black, so no can do. Vacancies were clearly marked. No coloureds need apply. So did seed. No time to stop. Businessman, not family man. Things to do, places to go, driving his taxi from A to B. Called himself an entrepreneur. He went from job to job. Working hard was not enough. Good fortune never came. He had dreams of making it big and returning home in style. He's an old man now. And he still dreams. But he no longer dreams of making it big. He does still dream of returning home. But now he dreams of returning home in a box. This one is a West Indian grandmother talking to her granddaughter, born in England, and it's called Gloria to Granddaughter Gloria. My uncles then beat me, my cousins then beat me. I wanted to run away. Although I was family, I was not a sister. I was a problem for them. I have no parent, but I get education. I leave school at 14 to work in the field. I work with my uncle, hoeing the ground around the street car and peas. One day a lady from Brenard come. She asked if me what works for she. Her mother-in-law need a girl for the house. Me say, yes, ma'am. And off we go. I was with her. Mother Hyde was her name for a long time. And it was good. It was during the years of the Second World War. And her sons them away from home. But when they return, me have to leave. And the pastor, him take me on. Then I come 18. All grown up, me set off on my own. Moving around, but me won't settle down. So me come to England and make a new life. 60 years past now. Ooh, my life's soon gone. But yours is about to start. Now listen and remember your grandmother's story. I know you hear it for the first time. I tell you because it's your history. So you know where you come from. More important, so you know where you go. <laughs> this 
one was written in 1914, and it's on more grandparents. It's um, my mother-in-law's father, and I did some research for her, um, and he was shot in, in uh, 1916 at Eves, or White Reeves, as she calls it, <laughs> on the front line. And when I told my son, he said, I would have loved to have talked to him. He probably wouldn't have wanted to talk about it, but anyway, it's called Great Granddad. I can't imagine what it's like to stand knee deep in mud for days and days, your feet in sodden boots turn into mush, sharing a trench with rats, your clothes with lice, to sleep if you are lucky, standing up, if not, face down forever. I can't imagine what it's like, so young to leave your home for foreign fields and there to kill some other mother's son. The constant sound of shelling, the sky above burn black, Poisonous gas, always a threat to take your breath away. I can't imagine what it's like. Patrol in no man's land. Avoid the sniper if you can. Stand to, stand watch, stand down, but do not stand with head above the parapet. I can't imagine a hundred years on what it was like for you. Today your picture's on the wall, your medals proudly on display. I would have loved to talk with you, great granddad, bombardier, James McHugh. poem is about, well, it happened in primary school, um, and it's the title of the book, Little Brown Girl. You're brown, he said, and kicked me, then ran off across the playground. Your hair is fat, he laughed and pulled the ribbon off my plait. He stole my milk. Didn't care, never drank it anyway. <laughs> Classroom joker, his friends laughed. School bully, pushing and pinching. His green eyes stared, I stared back, counting the freckles on his pale skin. He made faces at me in class. I poked my tongue out in return. Teacher made me stand out front. He blushed, but wasn't caught. One day, he didn't kick or punch. Want to be my friend, he said. Okay. <laughs> my mum says I have to be nice to you because you're just a little brown girl. Oh. <laughs> and that stayed with me always. And <laughs> I now have a response to it, but I didn't then. <laughs> this was, I was a teenager in the, in the 80s, and, well, in the 80s. And um, there was riots in Brixton and St Paul's and Nottingham, and race riots. And um, if you were like me, mixed race, you were expected to choose whether you were on the black side or the white side. That wasn't as easy as it sounds. Um, this is called skin. I was happy in my own skin, my mixed black and white skin, the skin I'd always had and never thought to question. You said I was half, half caste, half valued. You called me coconut, not a term of endearment. They called me golly and wog. Not black enough, not white enough, not quite right enough. Mixed up, mixed colour, mixed race. It mattered back then, the shade of black. Not just the colour of my skin, but the colour of my politics. I never got it right, I never fitted in. I couldn't be what you thought I should be. So I gave up trying. I no longer ask, am I black enough, am I white enough? Because I am what I am. And I stand proud before you, in full colour, black and white. And I shall end the first half with an Elvis poem. Sorry, don't say sorry. Um me and my daughter absolutely adore Elvis. I've always loved Elvis. Mm -hmm. And we sing and dance around the house like lunatics all the time. But she said to me once why don't you write a poem about Elvis? You write a poem about everything else. <laughs> so, technically, this is a poem to Elvis, not about him. And it's called Elvis Has Left the Building. Crying in the chapel. You're always on my mind. I can't stop loving you. I know you're nothing but a hound dog, but I just want to be your teddy bear. <laughs> you don't have to say you love me. One night with you would make my dreams come true. So don't be cruel. Love me tender. Don't ask me why I love you. 
You're the devil in disguise, but you give me fever, I'm all shook up. You and your blue suede shoes, you're a flaming star. Yes, the impossible dream. But now and again, there's a fool such as I. Are you lonesome tonight? I gotta know. Say you will and make the world go away. It's now or never. I'm in the ghetto, Heartbreak Hotel, next to the jailhouse rock. No need for suspicious minds. I'm a hard-headed woman. You're a big hunk of love. I just can't help believing how great thou art. <laughs> Well, I'm old enough to remember when there was only one Elvis, so uh, <laughs> I appreciate that. More applause, please, for Rachel. Great. Uh...